Welcome to New Life Ministries Worldwide. It is Christmas Sunday. The Lord is doing some wonderful things here. We're going to welcome you in today into our Christmas service, Unwrapping the Gifts. The Lord did a wonderful thing in the message. We want you to come on in, be a part of this worship and word experience. God bless you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's.
day as we grow into the Word of God, we get bigger and bigger and bigger on the earth. Your skin can't hold you. Your house can't hold you. Your community can't hold you. The Word of God being manifested in your life with the power of the Holy Spirit is going to take you places and open up windows and bring things to you. You'll have influence and power that you didn't even know. I'm teaching it here today in Jesus' name. Doors will open up to you. God will give you favor with men. He'll even make wicked men have to work for you. He'll cause people that don't even love what you do for God or the God you do it for to open up the windows of their hearts and begin to pour on the inside of what we need in the kingdom. They'll give you houses and land. They'll give you cars because the kingdom of God shall not go in lack. You don't have to have the money when you understand the gift you are. You become the resource. You become the resource. Somebody say, I'm the resource. Touch yourself and say, I'm God's wealthy place. Now shout, I'm a gift, I'm a gift, I'm a gift, I'm a gift. Shout it, you didn't shout it. Been invited to preach and teach, sitting with one pastor last night at his house, and he said, I want you to teach my leadership in the year 2015. I'm giving all my leadership to you for the year. I want you to teach them. I said, oh man, I ain't got time for all that old heap of foolishness. Somebody said heap of foolishness. Oh. I didn't put that in the, in the oh. vocabulary. Heap of foolishness. Got a little country to say it now. It's a heap of, say a heap of, heap of foolishness. Work with that, okay? Heap of foolishness. You know what Okay. Because while you're growing, I'm going to walk to the yellow mind to you. While you're growing, Linda, you don't see that the gift has gotten too big for just you. And God can't just keep you in the same place. So folk, even folk that don't understand your like, you're going to have to come back to you. I'm not going to ask you for anything but what God has put in you. You'll know when you're going to your righteous place because folk will stop asking to borrow stuff that they can get for themselves. And they want to get to know the God on the inside of you. If you just look at my exterior, I'm rocking this big face bow tie. Y'all see? It ain't that little bitty one. I had some of those. I'm too big for a man to wear a little choke there. Someone got me. Dr. Young one got this for me. My, my big brother, he went and got this for me. He's been too big since before. He got a bit of a little bit boy boy time. So he got this. Rock this big one. Shack that hanky in there. Y'all see these shoes, don't you? Get it. Is the lighting good? That's that, that's that deer skin. Buff faith mezzling I got on. Everybody ain't walking like this, baby. Everybody walking like this. My shoes so like my feet, I feel barefooted. I hate it. You see what I'm saying? Then I'm rocking this. Y'all see this light stripe. It ain't a pin stripe. Boy, it's a light stripe. It's PNG, but no, no.
call this on. If I didn't stand up here and have a word from the Lord that could change your life, it would be in vain. The issues that are against us is no one is telling you how big your inner gift is. And you're spending all your time preparing the exterior of your life. When you would do better to put your wealth on your interior and let your exterior be KNG. Don't get me wrong. You can have whatever you want. God don't mind you having nice things. I'm doing this analogy for a purpose. For I know the plans I have for you. This is God talking. Declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. And a future. Jeremiah 29. God how are you going to take me. See I've always thought that God was just going to miraculously take me there. But Minister Stacy, I just found out. That I'm going to actually take myself there. You're going to actually take yourself there. That little gift that you think is not has no value. Let me hit that before I go further. There is not a person in this room that the gift you have already doesn't have value. If we're going to have Christmas, let's have Christmas. Why would Jesus do all he did for you not to have value? From the moment you said yes to God, Jesus anointed everything. He spread a tape. Give me some more oil, please. Give me some more oil, please. Watch out. The table's been spread. Everything on that tape is for you. Some of us have the mistake in our mind that we want it all right now. And no one has ever told us about faithfulness. God gave me that quote I gave you a few weeks ago. Faithfulness is the ignition to favor. Favor is a child, an offspring to faithfulness. You be faithful to God. You think I'm just having you tithe for money? I'm going somewhere. And I told you for over a year before I brought the tithing in the house that I'm taking you with me in Jesus' name. Shepherd has 100 sheep and one go astray. What would he do? He going after that one. I got a heap of folk that going to go in overflow with me. And tithing is part of the first seed of obedience to go into overflow. I'm taking you with me in Jesus' name. You ain't going to sit back and gawk and hate on everybody else living in overflow, being healed, being set free, being delivered, walking in new anointings, watching the gifts. You too will have them. You're going to learn sitting here under the word that you are gifted by God to be. Faithfulness is when you tell God that my storage is empty and I'm available to be used. God will bring that first gift. He'll, he'll send angels. He'll send angels to deliver the first small gift. Somebody tell them you're available right now. Go ahead. church. But the truth of the matter is some of your greatest gifts are in small boxes. What good would it do for somebody to give you a big diamond 
that you can't wear on your finger. So when you, you gotta, it's gotta have a stage, baby. So the diamond, the presentation is everything. Anybody ever been proposed to? And they said like all the men getting with plain vans. When you get that first gift, Jesus Christ, he's that diamond and he comes into the rough. Somebody call that. So what he accepted, she accepted, they accepted Jesus. That ain't nothing, it's just a little bitty box. They don't know that you got your diamond. They don't know that diamond went through something for you. They don't know that regardless of what you did, that diamond will never give up on you. That diamond will never forsake you. That diamond will never turn its back on you. And they want to judge you according to your small gift. The word of God says, don't forget your humble beginnings. Regardless where we go. Somebody say, regardless where we go. Regardless where we go. We never forget where we come from. We never Folks, forget. That's what I mean. I'm just ready for us to go spiritually. And go. So don't leave here thinking I'm mad at anybody. I'm just sick of talking about the same thing over and over. Come on, y'all. Let's get it. Let's move. So those financial burdens were on me. I just, my today, I was just sick and tired. I know I'm doing right. I know, I know I'm working a word. So when I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, then God could give me a way to get you to want to be a part. But until then, I had to go back to my humble beginnings. I went over there on Eastwood. Many of y'all weren't with us on Eastwood. I stood out there in that back field. I remember the first day, d roll that first Sunday on Eastwood where all I had was a small word. Just had a small gift. That Sunday, y'all, I had one message. That's all I had. I had a word from God to start a church. And one message. Not like I could preach all day and you wouldn't hear the same thing, but I only had one word. And a small gift. I remember going out there to the back of that lot with nobody guaranteed to come. And I had enough parking for a hundred cars. I said, if they come and they park on this grass, I got no parking for a hundred cars. But I'm not promised one. But I was available. And my table was anointed. And I was working the word of God. See, some of you all right now gave up on yourself with your small box, with your first gift, God told me to tell you to get up and just come touch the table again and give him praise for your small gift. Just give God praise for your small gift. Don't get caught up in where you come from. You need to come back, go back like I did on Eastwood a couple weeks ago and just look at that lot and say, I remember where you brought me from. I can't get discouraged now. I remember what you brought me from. You can't get so unsatisfied with God because you don't see change all the time. You got to remember the diamond that's in the small box. Remember the small box when nothing and nobody thought you were worth it or were going to make it. You had your small box and you had one word from God. When nobody was asking you to come and be a part of anything. Doesn't matter if they don't see it, you all. You don't need man to validate what God has spoken to you. You need to believe in your initial gift. I need 10 people who have given up on themselves and the dream God gave you to come touch the anointed table right now. spread for you. The table spread for you. You are the greatest gift. You are God's greatest gift. He can't release the next thing to you give him praise for this thing. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who told you that you didn't deserve and you weren't worthy. Go back to your anointed place. Go back to your initial place. Go back to understanding what God said to you in the beginning. Now that you're there, 